right, guys. Welcome to episode eight of Weekly Talk. This week we have Bob to my right and Danny to my left. Uh, we got a plethora of uh, topics. I actually reached out to some people and had them give us topics, so we're going to be going through that. Uh, you guys got anything you want to add before we drive forward? Uh, no. I yeah. think we're good. No, I'm good right now. All right, so uh, I introduced the voicemail segment, so I'm going to go ahead and play you guys our very first few voicemails. Are you ready for that? I'm ready. You ready, Bob? Sure. All right, cool. You have received a voicemail. Ryan Silba, you can go fuck yourself. Makuna Matata, this is Rolo. Just called your podcast to see what this was all about. I'll talk to you later. Pretty sure Ryan was telling himself to go fuck off or whatever. I think he said go fuck yourself. Which eventually, if we ever try to monetize, we're both going to have to worry about this whole fuck, bitch, cussing. Any of that's got to go. But uh, Ryan gave us a subject. It's about Chinese ghost cities. We're going to get into that. Do you know much about those, Bob? Yeah, a little bit. All right. What about you, Danny? Just what I googled five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are pretty ill prepared on the Chinese ghost cities. I actually have quite a bit that I uh, looked up. But as usual, we're going to go on with our emails because we uh, we got a couple. One of them is directed at me and Danny. One of them is directed at me, Danny, and Dave. So uh, we're going to get into that. You have received a new electronic communication. So our very first email, uh, I don't know if the guy wants us to read his name. It doesn't really matter. None of the names matter. But uh, he addressed some issues with Dave and I. And Dave actually left a, left us a voicemail because he's addressed the issues this guy hit us with. All right, so here's his email. What's up, Danny and Chris? My name is Blink. I just finished episode 7. Not bad at all. Do you guys plan to ever do gaming again? I know you mentioned the Stadia. Was this a fallout between Dave and Chris? Is there anything that you can share on why he is not doing the show? Is Danny going to be a permanent member? My brother and me are both curious as to why someone would quit as you guys are growing. It's pretty steady growth. You've got some downvotes here and there, but you're growing pretty decently. It's just a weird it's just weird to suddenly quit. You and Danny have wonderful connection and the chemistry is there, which we're fucking married, so I would hope so. Uh, <laughs> it makes things very awkward. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think together we can get this thing to the top. Will you guys be taking emails anymore? Well, here's your answer on that. Uh <laughs> Are you guys still going to be doing giveaways? Plenty. What about Bob? I know a lot of questions, but people rely on you every Saturday. Well, today's Friday, so you might get it early, bud. Uh, will Dave ever be back? Can we still request things to be discussed? Where are all the theories? Everyone has asked about them. When are you going to do them? What does the hu future hold for weekly talk? Is Dave and Chris even friends anymore? Are Dave and Chris even friends anymore? I don't know. It's a lot of questions. Round of applause for Danny. Way to go. Why do you spell it with two N's? <laughs> Not that it matters. We need a solid team here, guys. Is this going to be it? I know you've teased Bob as well. Will it ever be Danny and Bob? I wouldn't mind all three of you guys switching out. Answer my questions. All right. How do we want to approach this, guys? Oh, shit. I already forgot the order. Okay. Um, <sighs> well, obviously, Bob is here. So that answers one question. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. He'll be making, like, intermittent uh, appearances, like I guess. guest appearances, yeah. yeah. Um, for my name, it's always been with two N's. I figured, you know, men always have the nice, strong names. And I, I don't know, D-A-N-I isn't, like, Is it a name I always... Is California? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of. I feel like it's it just has more... I love the Straight what about it. Bob. That makes me think of one of my favorite fucking yeah, movies. I was, say, so I was like, <laughs> what about Bob? Is he asking about me or the movie? <laughs> nah, I he's talking tell. about you. <laughs> now, Bob, I do believe he's going to he's gonna hop back and forth. Yeah. He obviously just like, all right, so why Dave quit? He's going to answer it himself. He left me a voicemail to give you guys. But it's not that he really quit. He's just not going to be present at all times. All right, I mean, he'll be here for like the Google Stadia or the Call of Duty. Actually, he left the Call of Duty beta review. Didn't? And if you want to play later on might be we're right. stuck checking yeah. out so he's gonna be like a guest also yeah he yeah. uh it's still gonna be like we're not even gonna have it's weekly talk featuring danny and chris and whoever the else whoever the fuck else wants to come along you know uh right now that's me yeah <laughs> so here's your three-way that you asked for uh bobby danny chris all right 
So I, uh, what do you guys think? I should probably just insert Dave's little clip of why he quit. That would probably answer it best. Because he, yeah. he didn't quit. Just know that he didn't quit. There is no bad blood. Yeah, he's taking some time off. All right. What up, what up, what up? This is Dave. Um, I actually left a message prior to this, and I was going to give you a short review of the Call of Duty beta. However, I'm limited on this voicemail. So just want to um, kind of address at least one email that came through regarding a fallout between me and Chris. So obviously everybody knows I'm not a uh, regular on the show anymore. Um, that is because of several things. First, I mean, I'm, you know, full-time in school, uh, full-time work, overtime at work. Um, I have a baby on the way, and I'm currently in the process of moving. So taking time out of my day to do things like that is very, very, very rare. Um, so I did want to let you know there was no fallout between me and Chris. We are still friends. We talk all the time. Um, we have planned for future ep episodes such as the Google Stadia, um, maybe a VR episode for gaming, um, along with a review of the new Call of Duty coming out. So I have agreed to set something up along the lines of that. So, you know, we could jump in, review that, um, give everybody their gaming fix. Um, it is unfortunate that gaming won't be a regular thing on this show. However, I know, I know Bob's into gaming. Um, at least I know he's excited about cyberpunk. So maybe he could get on and, um, give a review of that when that comes out. Not too sure. However, nothing crazy happened between me and Chris. It's just busy life. Things happen. It's unfortunate, but I will be appearing on the show randomly and that will be teased on Twitter and um if you want to hear anything else from me any questions anything like that feel free to reach out um at WTF I believe it's still Dave and Chris at gmail.com um yeah let us know your thoughts and if you have any questions thanks a lot guys later and just to be fair to my man Dave and you know how I just mentioned that this will always be a part of his you know he's he's allowed to do it he also did send us that Call of Duty beta review I don't know I'm not too sure people want to hear it Dave I don't know <laughs> uh what do you think Bob should we play it I'd like to hear it I don't know oh that's I mean... fucking weird all right so you got <laughs> Dave you got one fan I'm just fucking with you man uh so here's that Call of Duty beta review that Dave wanted to leave with the first voicemail, however, was cut off. Hey guys, this is Dave again. Um, I actually wanted to call back in to leave a kind of, I guess, first impressions of the Call of Duty beta that's currently on PS4. Um, I don't have much time because it's not going to allow me to go into vast details. However, um, I do want to say anybody interested in this new Call of Duty, if you want a nostalgic modern warfare feel, this is probably what you're looking for. Because this game, I think, is amazing just because of the nostalgia with... It feels like Modern Warfare 2. Um, not so much Modern Warfare 3. I think it's more based on Modern Warfare 2. But um, I like how you have settings where you can change the hit markers to be um, the classic hit indicator. So it'll sound like the classic game, which is really nice. Um, a load of weapons, even to try in the beta. They have a capped at level 10 right now. Um, but I know that's going to open up here, here in the next couple of days or next day or so. Um, so you can't unlock too much. However, I did, when I first started, I kind of sucked because I was getting back into multiplayer instead of blackout. But, um, I did go on like a 15 kill streak in one of the matches and did get a chopper gunner. And, um, the chopper gunner is pretty nice, except I haven't used one for a while. So I didn't realize I could move the chopper gunner. Um, while I shot, you know, uh, missiles and everything. So, yeah, I found that out. So that was really nice. Um, other than that, I mean, the gunsmith is really nice. It has multiple attachments you unlock throughout, um, the gameplay. You know, you level up, you unlock, um, your barrels, your stocks, your magazines, and it shows you the pros and cons of each. So if you attach this, this is the pro. Attach this, this is the con. It, it's a really nice system. And, um, I know this voicemail is about to cut me off. However, if you haven't tried it, please try it pre-order. Um, let us know what you think. I can go into more details um, in the full review, but let us know what you think. Other than that, I'm out.
Later. Like I said, that will not be the end of Dave. Dave will be by when Call of Duty drops mm. because uh, I did not spend $200 for us to not fucking talk about this, all right? Uh, we do have one more email, and uh, the guy specifically said no names, and after I read you the email, you're going to know why. All right. Man, when you guys started teasing your wives coming on, I grew anxious. I've got a huge secret. I've had an affair, and I don't know what to do. Should I tell my wife? I made a mistake, and I feel terrible, but it would kill her. I don't want to be without her. I've heard not to tell her because it wouldn't end well for us. What would I? What do I do? No names, please. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so this is Bob's first time hearing this. Uh, Danny, man, you go first. I'll go second. Bob goes third. Let's, how do you feel about this? Well, I already told you how I felt, but I'll tell everyone else. You should probably tell your wife, um, just because I'm biased and I'm the girl. I'd want to, like, Chris to tell me if, I don't know, he just becomes stupid or something. I'd, I don't know. But it's kind of unfair to her to have to basically live in a lie that you're kind of hiding from her. And it got, I'd be damned if she finds out. She'll be really pissed and you probably won't be with her anyways. So I asked Danny. I said to her, I was like, all right, let's say I don't tell you. And you find out later on, all right? I'm fucked in too, aren't I? Mm -hmm. it's, it's good to be fucked now than later, I guess. Like, what if, hypothetically, and this is big hypothetical, mm -hmm. let's say you don't tell your wife, and then you get summoned to court for child support in a year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's gonna suck. dude, you gotta fucking come clean, man. I don't, I don't know, man. I know that you... I know telling us you probably feel like you lifted that burden off your shoulders a little bit, but you didn't. No. You didn't. You need to tell your wife, man. Definitely tell your wife. What do you think, Bob? Uh, yeah, I hate to pile on here, but <laughs> I mean, well, number one, if she finds out from someone else, it's going to be worse. Yep. If you tell her, maybe she'll go lenient on you. Um, I don't know what your home life is like, but if there's, you know, property that needs to be split up or anything like that, you want to get that out of the way before anything further, you know, anything happens further down the road, it's going to make that a lot harder. Uh, aside from that, like I said, I would go you know come clean maybe she'll go easy on you uh you could try and live with the rest of your life but can you look her in the eye every day and still feel the same way and still feel you know guilt free i think that's probably one of the biggest things i, I feel like there's something that maybe you're not telling us either i want to all right just email me i won't put this on the air i need to know is the reason you don't want to tell your wife because your affair does not longer no longer wants you or you're just selfish. Is and, it someone that yeah. she might be close to also? Like, I feel like, because if I were to have an affair, then clearly I didn't care about my relationship. But for you to, like, backpedal, it's kind of weird. Like, Thanks. you either go go all the way, or I, I don't know, man. I've never been there, so I'm giving you the wrong advice. But I need to know. Email me so I know whether or not you wanted to do a relationship with your affair and it just didn't work out, and that's why you're <laughs> trying to stay That's what he keeps telling me. I mean, there's the cliche of moment of weakness. You know, I'm going to play devil's advocate for, for a little bit of that. Maybe it was a moment of weakness, but still, you made a commitment to this person. You know what I mean? And that's where the commitment really shines through is whether you have those moment of weaknesses or not. Also, Bob and I had noticed something uh, with your email name. Can you tell me if, and you would know, just email me and let us know if we went to school with you. I won't put out any of your information. Oh, my God. Chris. I'm just curious. It's just, I, I looked at the name and I saw, like, oh, fuck, man, I might know this person. But, they're, you know, they're people might people share names all the time. It's not, you it's don't not have uncommon. To share your name. You don't have to tell me. Uh, all right, so we're going to move straight into our subjects, all right? So we got quite a bit built up for this week. Uh, first and foremost, my, uh, I'd like to call him my hero, Elvis Duran. I look up to this man quite a bit. So they, uh, they actually got married in August. I think it was August 22nd. Uh, but they are having their wedding tomorrow, which, well, if you're, I don't know when you're listening to this. So they're having their wedding on Saturday, September 14th, 2019. The, uh, the marriage was uh, back in August. Uh, where, what city was that? Staten Island. And they were married by a fella named the Honorable Matt Tatone. And he, when he was a, an assemblyman for the New York State, he played a huge role in passing legislation in support for same-sex marriage. So I assume that's why Elvis went with that. But uh, no, man, I think it's really cool. If you guys are hearing this, you should congratulate him. He's a 
done quite a bit for the LGBTQ community. I think that's awesome. He even said once that, you know, he never thought he'd be able to get married legally. So, we're, we're I mean, we're stepping some uh, boundaries that people never thought would happen. I mean, in our lifetime, as little as 10 years ago, I mean, it was kind of hard to think that that's going to be legal nationwide that soon. You well, know he even, I mean? like, whenever, when the whole thing was going on with the Supreme Court, he, yeah. like, on air was just in complete awe at, like, how this is happening. Something he never dreamt would be possible is something that he's allowed to do. And I think it's a beautiful thing, man. Absolutely. Love whoever you want to love. In yeah. all honesty, I thought it was pretty stupid that we're having an argument over who can marry who, but yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> to each, Dave and I preached it before. To each his own. Dude, whatever. Your happiness is yours and yours alone. Don't let anybody shit on it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Danny. What subjects you got, man? Because this ain't all coming from Chris. There's no oh, fucking shoot, way Chris. this is all coming from Chris. You got me off guard. I didn't have my. All right. Well, let me ask. Let me up. ask the both of you. Did okay. anybody hear about that that couple in PA? All right. So they went to bed with eleven hundred dollars in their bank account, and they woke up with the <laughs> uh, hundred and twenty thousand dollars deposited. Yeah. Yeah. Are they wrong for yeah, spending it all? They're wrong. Oh, no doubt. All right. You can't even play devil's advocate, man. You knew. Yeah, you not knew. Even a question. I'm sorry. I mean, I would love to say, man, if I woke up with that in my bank account, yeah, I'd spend it too. But the first time you go to the store with that in your mind, you got to think someone's going to catch this amount of money. You no know, doubt. Yeah. I mean, that's going to come up missing. Someone's going to go, hey, where's this go? Yeah, I all don't. Right. <laughs> I got to ask. So they gave 15000 to a friend. Is that friend on the hook as well? Uh, I don't think so. No. I don't that, think so. I would no. I don't think so. I mean, do they know where it came from? Is the next question. Right? But, Are they accomplice? To yeah. The, I mean, the like first, hiding the, the money. The original couple <laughs> took the money and gave it to their friend. Uh, unless the friend really knows and is one of the people who talked him into doing that, I don't see how they could be held legally responsible. I mean, it's not. It's not. They're probably not happy about it. I mean, these motherfuckers bought an SUV, they paid off some bills, uh, and then I read, like, they, they did some car work. How the fuck did you do some car work when you just bought a new SUV? So I don't know if I read the article wrong or not, but it, it's baffling to know. I saw the picture, and I don't want to judge, but these are, the they look like the type of people who All right. would not report. <laughs> would, I mean... <laughs> it, it would definitely be a conflict of conscience with me, too, but I would absolutely turn around and go, no, I'm going to get caught with this. It's the same thing as we said before. It's better to come clean first and then have someone else come clean and, you know, tell on you. And then it seems like you were trying to hide it. So, yeah, absolutely. I don't know about that one. All uh, right. Uh, Danny, where are we at? Did you pull up your phone yet or what? I finally pulled it up. Um, well, you know how I was talking about the vaping last um, week. So I just wanted to, like, do a follow-up with that. So Joel, like, the highest, like, leading e-cigarette um, manufacturer, was given a notice about misleading users about safer alternatives. And it was stating this a couple days ago, so they need to respond in 15 days to comply with regulations or they can be, um, I think, either shut down or most of their products, like, taken off of, like, manufacturing. Um, and on a little side note, um, the Trump administration, the CDC was even mentioning like trying to ban the flavored e-cigarettes because they're more geared to the younger generation, the teenagers. So what are those nicotine free or what are they? No, no, they no, no. The Jules, they all have nicotine in them. Some are lower doses. Oh, the and some flavor are... appeals because it's flavor free. Yeah, yeah. there's mango right. and there's cream yeah. and mint and all the that mint, stuff. I heard in the mango are like the top two, um, like highest paid for, so... I don't I mean, know. I thought that was kind of interesting. I got to be honest, though. I don't hang out with a whole lot of high schoolers, but the majority of <laughs> adults that I know that vape, they have some weird names for the stuff that they Oh, man. Through. Yeah. Like, uh, their dad, dude. Their dad, yeah. man. Yeah. He, this dude drives like an hour north to fucking go pick Just to get up some damn <laughs> Just to get, And he, juice. every time every time he said, I'm going to get my juice, I'm like, what, what the, where the fuck are you getting juice at, man? Giant <laughs> Eagle was right down the road. What the fuck? So, yeah, I'm not caught up on the hip terms of juice, but whatever. Hey, we're old, man. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. Uh, so I kind of, I need to talk to you guys about something that happened today that kind of bothers me a little bit. All right. Eddie Money just passed away. How do you uh, feel about that? I mean, that's a loss in rock and roll for sure. I mean, yeah. he's, I mean, he was a rock legend. Yeah. You got Take Me Home Tonight, uh, which pretty much everybody, uh, that's pretty much everybody. That's probably the only song. song I really know from him. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Money, money, wasn't that one? 
Uh, shit, man. We got the we got the world at our fingertips, <laughs> so we might as well look it up. Yo, dirt. He got shaken. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> snapping a finger. Yeah, you got that. Uh, shit, man. What which one's on Joe Dirt? What two tickets to paradise? No, but that's uh, that's a good one. All right, I don't know the one on Joe Dirt then. Uh, walk on water, yeah, fall in love. The one. All right, walk cool. On I'm not a bit. It's been a long time since I've seen Joe Dirt. And that fucking second Joe Dirt, that, that, was, that was horrible. Garbage. There was no sequel. I don't know what you're talking about. There was one yeah. Joe Dirt. As far as I'm concerned, there's only yeah. three diehards, too. Uh, they stopped at number three. What? Three diehards. Yeah, there's only three. You don't fuck with diehards? No, no. Oh, no, no. man. You know, Elvis Duran was actually in one of the diehards. Was it the one one of the three? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he, was, he, was in, he was in one of the ones that you recognize as a diehard movie. All right, yeah. I want to check it out. So, uh, the RIAA which is the Recording Industry Association of America, just announced that for the first time in 30 years, vinyl is on track to outsell, outsell CDs. Hmm. Now, keep in mind, it's not that they're outselling CD. Like, there's not more vinyls being sold. It's the price. Oh. So they're on track to make more money. Not really outsell, but make more money. Because you figure the price of a vinyl is three times the price of a CD. So, of course, they're going to make more money. But as of... As of right now, with their uh, what is that called? Midterm or I have no idea. I don't I don't know what it's called, but vinyl is at 224 million and CDs are at 247 million. So I mean they're closing that gap, and I think it's cool. I think it's really awesome that you know we're bringing shit like that back. Now, do you think that'll ever happen with CDs? Ah, uh, no, I don't. Probably think so. not. No. I just think the uh, quality I of mean, a CD is kind of. Yeah, I mean, well, cassettes, cassettes are doing it too. Cassettes, cassettes are selling are, yeah. quite a bit. What? Yeah, I mean, they uh, are. you got these exclusive. Uh, every band has caught on too. Wow. Every band is putting out an exclusive vinyl, a an vinyl exclusive or cassette. A cassette. I don't have a cassette player, but you're goddamn right that I own. <laughs> I own a yellow Twenty One Pilots cassette that M&Ms. says Trench. I have Eminem's cassette. Oh yeah, dude, and that was super fucking rare, by the way. Yeah, he made super me fucking rare. Freaking. It was a Black Friday. Right off black for Black Friday. Yeah, it was a Black Friday deal, and I mean the the moment. All right, so it went online at six p.m. six oh one p.m. Everything was sold out. Goddamn. Yeah. And it was kind of funny because he went into a gas station and I thought he was getting robbed because he was running out of the gas station. Like, honestly, someone was like chasing him. He jumps in the car and said, what is the, what's your issue? He said, you need to get on the website and buy that cassette right now. <laughs> oh yeah. We were in Columbus coming home because we were out. seeing uh, your sister. <laughs> yeah. Your sister was home for the holiday. You were up there. So no, this is on our way home from things. Columbus, and I'm like, we got to get this shit now, <laughs> you know? And she don't let me do anything while driving, which is safe of her. Yeah. No, no no, fault on her. Responsible. But you got to get it done, man. Yeah. I'm a fucking he Eminem was me. nut. Uh, Running into the car. I was freaked out. <laughs> I thought we were going to get robbed. I think Eminem's gearing up for some new music, too. Something just happened on his Twitter. Or, yeah, his Twitter. He made a post on Twitter, and then people were saying that he posted something on YouTube, which is really weird. It was like a jazz-oriented... Uh, new uh, instrumental that the and it was just, just a still frame image for the video, and it said the real Slim Shady, but it wasn't. I, I could it didn't even sound like the real Slim Shady. Hmm. But he's he's up to something. I'd like to. I saw a post the other day where someone said someone needs to go after Eminem. We need some more good music. So you know, referencing the beef between him and MGK. You know. I mean, oh, I think it. Uh, you know, any kind of beef does reignite. You know, good music. It it, it instills lyricism for sure. Yeah, I don't know what, I mean, what do you mean by good beef, though, too? Because there are a lot of them that uh, he attacked that just kind of, it was one-sided in that way. But, I mean, I I did like MGK's uh, initial diss, and I did like Eminem's response to that. So, I mean, I don't know. I thought they were both really good. No side. No no side picked on my part. Uh, Dave foolishly said something about MGK being, and I'll say this. MGK had a lot of good bars. Uh... A lot of people are trying to pick him apart because the compliment followed by a diss, followed by a compliment. Fo- Whatever. That's called a shit sandwich where I'm from. Mm-hmm. You know I what mean, I mean? He's conflicted. Genuinely conflicted. I yeah. do like that about yeah. that. Uh, it's your favorite artist. That is one of your true inspirations. And now you're going up against him. That's, it's got to be a hard thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Danny, I don't, I don't know whose side she's on. I know she doesn't really... She's Eminem the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Not she, gonna lie. she knows everything in Eminem. But it has helped her in a couple battles at work when people yeah. try to talk hip hop. She's married to a guy who has hip hop knowledge out the ass. Uh, so 
She won an argument about when the Slim Shady LP released. <laughs> All because of her husband, so I'll give her that. But, uh, no, I mean, back to disses. We got the... So, the, the same time that Eminem and MGK were dissing each other, g Easy and MGK were dissing each other. All right, and that didn't get big. It, uh... It actually, it was a freestyle and funk flex between that. That was MGK's shots at GZ. It was pretty cool. He said, uh, let's just keep it G. Only easy I fuck with is E. And I thought that was good. Okay. I thought that was really clever. But that was it. He only took a couple stabs at him. And then GZ came back and it was, <sighs> it was a, it was a corny track. It really was a corny track. And I'm a big GZ fan, but it was corny. It was corny as fuck. And I think that their beef has caused a lot of hate towards g Easy because uh, g Easy just performed at the Oakland Raiders halftime show a couple days ago. Hmm. And he was trending on Twitter, but not for reasons that a fan would want. Oh, shit. Uh, people were hating. Uh, what's that meme, that SpongeBob meme, Danny? All right, I'm a head out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, All right, I'm a head out of here. So it went, people were posting that meme right above the caption that said, and now performing your halftime show, G Easy. <laughs> I I'm a head out, and that's kind of fucked up because G Easy is a really good performer. I've been to just one of his concerts, and it was really good. So I don't I don't know where the hate's coming from. Maybe it's the MGK stands. I bet you they hate that I even said that. Yeah, I mean that, it's but that's it, man. Stan has become a, a, a it's become a thing in our culture like memes. I mean it's just one of the things now that's become pop culture. To identify someone as a stan if they are a diehard fan, uh, you know, a mark, as they say in wrestling terms, too. So it, it's, uh, that's how it goes. If it's really popular, it gets spread around, and that's how it sticks. So. I'm not a fan, I don't pick, I don't pick sides in these beefs. I'm a fan of music. I like real lyricism. If you're mumble rap, but your lyrics are good, get some better delivery. <laughs> Um, I mean, all right, and you guys know where I stand on Tom McDonald as of recently. Oh, are you going on to that now? I'm going on to Let's this go fucking to rant, all right? so A quick one. <laughs> it'll be a quick one. I'm sitting back. All right, check this out. Y'all remember when he released this CD on August 30th, 2019? Yep. I well, it didn't really release. What happened was you had to order it, which I did. I, I obliged, and I, I ordered this CD. And I waited, and I waited. And that CD that released on the 30th of August uh, showed up to my house on the 12th of September. And it didn't work. So this motherfucker who blocked me on both my personal Twitter and my podcast Twitter, which I don't know how you block my podcast Twitter, dude. Like, <laughs> that's, that's I, I've never posted anything about him on my podcast. I never tagged him. Someone told him. Someone yeah, I'm, I'm thinking him. you got a rat. So <laughs> this, all right, and I'm not, I'm not the only one who received a faulty CD. No. Uh, and uh, if my wife, go ahead and block her too if you hear this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> had my wife not seen that he had posted something that said, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you guys are getting these fucked up CDs. Uh, we're going to fix it, blah, blah, blah. And he pretty much pointing the finger at the uh, CD manufacturing. Dis manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, let's just point the finger at you. You didn't release a fucking CD on August 30th. Oh, you released God. the option to buy it. And upon buying it, I received a fucking blank disc. I put it in my computer and it said blank CDR. What the fuck is that? You so now I got to wait until no or September 30th, one month after initial quote-unquote release date. How is that going to make a fan feel? You know what wouldn't have had that big of a problem? If you were to have released it digitally. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, he don't like that answer though. So no, don't. no, he tried. Uh, I told you, bro. I told you you can only get it get it physically. Well, and I day and age though too. I mean, you got YouTube and yeah, all that other stuff. Those songs are available. Dude, instantly. get this shit. All right, you got motherfuckers arguing with me. They're like, uh, you know how cool it is that this dude's signing every CD. Why can't you just be happy? You don't need it digitally. All right, so MGK is signing every CD. NF is signing every CD. Logic is signing every CD. It's not that genuine and unique. Yeah. It is how you get sales. Because like we said, CDs aren't selling. So what do you got to do? Sign them. Well, there's another question. I mean, why can't you have two tiers? You know, if you want just the song, you can download it. If you want the signed CD, pay you, more. You, know, you pay for it. Exactly. So, so I, I think it's cool that you're replacing my CD because, I mean, legally you probably have to. <laughs> but uh, you lost the fan, and I think it's real stupid that the guy who got big off of trolling is offended by somebody trolling. I mean, that is his stick. I mean, yeah. I, I still listen to some of his songs. 
Uh, I don't really have a, a horse in this race. No, no, I mean, whatever, dude. Fuck you, Tom. Eat a big fat dick. I don't care. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that if you want to. No, 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 no doubt. No, I'm, I'm all for you eating a big fat dick. But, that, all right, yeah, whatever. Whatever. I, it's, it just still, it still bothers me that the guy who likes to offend people gets offended so easily. I'm a fucking nobody with 30 followers, you know what I mean? And you you got 25,000 followers. Well, 24,999 because you blocked me. <laughs> All right, so drive on, guys. No more rant. No more rant. All right. So I was looking at Danny's uh, phone for what she had prepared for her notes. Mm-hmm. And the very beginning of it, episode eight. Another one, baby. So go ahead and say that. Episode Another eight. One. Oh, I That's did it. Another one. All right, baby. DJ Khaled. Another oh. one. He's having another one. That's oh. why I said another one, baby. All right, all right. I thought she was like implying, gonna oh, have another, another baby. one, baby. You guys, I'm so excited that I'm doing an episode with you. you well, know? no, it's not that. I was just, those are my notes because DJ Khaled is expecting another baby. What's, well, his, uh, what's going on about the Ohio State thing? Well, they tried trademarking the, oh. like, the Ohio State University, and I guess uh, no one was going for that, so they were pretty much denied trademarking the Ohio State University, which, in all fairness, I thought it was kind of stupid to even try that. Like, I mean, there is a Ohio University. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, what is that, Miami of Ohio, right? No, I think no. it's just Ohio. It's the, it's the green and it's got the cats on oh. it. I don't know. All right, maybe I was wrong. There is Miami of Ohio. Oh no, there's yeah, there's also, Ohio. Yeah, what I just Ohio University. I ain't go to college. I don't know much about them. I uh, <laughs> so, I uh, I asked some people to send us some, uh, you know, what what do you want to hear on this episode, and at the 32 minute mark or 32 minute mark for uh, Golden Eagle, if you want to reply to all of your crew fans, this is where they can hear me talk about the crew, even though I don't know much about them. Uh, it is now 32 black minutes, and yellow. 21 seconds. Yeah, black and yellow. <laughs> Not Pittsburgh Steelers black and yellow, but Columbus crew black and yellow. All right, so I'm going to almost, I'm going to interpret your notes. Here we go, Mr. Golden Eagle. The odds of the crew making the playoffs are slim to none, which kind of not a good way to open this one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Very disappointing and frustrating season. Do you watch soccer, Bob? No, I don't. Do you watch soccer, Danny? Um, we did go to the, the crew game. I had been to a crew game, so. I mean, but I was more miserable because it was 90 degrees. Oh my God. So, in the hot sun, and of course they had to sit, because. Well, uh, they sit in Nordic. Yeah. Which is right under the sun. Right under the sun. Yeah. And you always gotta, like, I, all I remember from that game is, oh, 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 and then a bunch of stomping. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. I think I drove and past sweating. their stadium. Like, <laughs> the Matt, all right, so you've seen their stadium. The yeah, Matt Freeze. That was yeah, cool. Matt yeah, Freeze. This is stadium. the last so year. Uh, wait, no, no, no. 2020 will be the last season in the Matt Freeze Stadium. Really? As, yeah. uh, as a part of saving the crew, they had to agree to build a, uh, a Columbus Crew Stadium in downtown Columbus, I believe. Oh, Jesus. So that's kind of cool. Uh, uh, what a date. He, he said to go ahead and get your tickets for the 2020 season. Uh, so get your 2020 season ticket membership because this will be your last season to be there. Mm. Uh, and that, that's actually a really big stadium. I think he said like 20,000. I just drove by on the interstate and it's just like, geez, that's awfully close too. Soccer I mean, is a really big fucking sport, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. shocked to see how many people, I, I guess my buddy's right, it's the real football, you know? It's late comer to America, really, but around the world, it's the sport. Uh, he wants to know what do we think, should they even say, I mean, should they even consider like, continuing trying for this year or should they try to focus they're like what three games away from the next season well the end of the season i just say give up and try again his thoughts are that they should try to you know worry about getting everyone healthy and build towards next year uh i kind of agree man yeah if you already know that this season's a bust why even try it's like preseason games you're not going to put your you know first string out there to the fourth quarter and and just keep playing and playing (laughs) and playing yeah reserve those good players and uh, try and get the younger ones a little bit more experience. Mm-hmm. I remember when I shot that, uh, when I recorded that 10-minute snippet, and uh, my buddy was up at the game, and it was versus Cincinnati, and I remember saying something about, if they lose, man, I'm not going to hear the end of it. So he uh, he said something about, hey, but that 3-1 to one game versus Cincinnati was beautiful. Ohio is black and gold. Hell is real. <laughs> so there's that. 
uh, Golden Eagle, man, I really don't have much to tell you, dude, because I don't know shit about soccer. And you know this, because you know me personally. Uh, I do appreciate my uh, Abubakar autograph that you got me. Uh, very nice, elegant design that you put it in. It was very cool. But you even told me that he's not on the team no more, so... I don't know. Maybe that might be worth it some money one day. It was because you liked his hair, though. Oh, yeah. Was the whole reason I became a yeah. fan of Abubakar is because he had some pretty dope-ass fucking hair. Yeah. That's why I fanned him. I don't know who he is. So that was pretty nice of... So, so thank you. Him. Thank you, Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle, by the way, he is a man. He's from Germany. That's Golden Eagle is their... Uh, what is that called? Uh, emblem? State bird? I mean... Yeah, it's their... It's like our, our uh, bald eagle, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if you guys just heard, Danny pulled some paper out of the printer. Oh, they're my uh, insurance cards. For some reason, for some reason out. they were, those two pieces of paper were bothering her. <laughs> and it just, it, they were sitting there perfectly fine, too, nested right in there. And Chris was like a dog seeing a squirrel, too. So, if, like, you, if you, if his audio goes out, it's because he's turned his head to see. I'm yeah, sorry. If you heard that, <laughs> that's Danny uh, having OCD. Yes. Uh, so I honestly feel like I might have brought all of the uh, topics to the table this week. Uh, uh, no, I brought up like one yeah. or two. She's got well, Borderlands Three. She did write something about Borderlands. Yeah, 3. but I didn't. I didn't mess with it yet. So, I Her mean, and I, I just knew it came out. We like, fucked with the Handsome Collection. Have you fucked with the Handsome Collection? No, no, no. I got Borderlands Two. I played it a little bit when uh, when I first got it, but I haven't played any really video games since Ark. Uh, so here, so here's the thing. Danny and I are not avid video game players. I do intend on getting full. I, I want to get fully involved in the Call of Duty movement. Uh, like Dave said in his little clip, that it reminds you of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of cool shit. However, anybody who's playing the beta, he did tell me to tell you that, like any other beta, the progression you make on this beta will not carry over to the game. Shocker. So. <laughs> I was a little bummed that I'm not going to make it to the game with a level 2 character. But whatever, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If you know anything about Call of Duty, you know a level 2 is pretty hard and <laughs> tough level to acquire. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think my first six matches, Bob, I had a total combined score of 5 kills and 47 deaths. Um, and you sure you want to say that on the air? Hey, man. <laughs> Fuck with me. Fuck with me. All I know, uh, on PlayStation, Infamous Lizard, that's who I am, uh, and on, well, they, I couldn't use Brassy for some nah, reason. Yeah, yeah. On Xbox, I'm Brassy Lizard. I'm going to be on both, and you wait. Just give me about 12, 13 months, and I'll be as good as all you other players. Make, I promise that. Make sure you guys understand, he's Brassy Lizard with two Ds. So if you see Brassy <laughs> Lizard getting a horrible KDR on that game, it's not me. And well, it's not the other brassy lizard. It's him. There was a time where my brother Ron, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> straight up murdered my KDR. We were, I remember it was, it was almost like I'd look at Bob and like, KDR? What's that? <laughs> you know, who cares about that? Uh, nothing against you, Ron, man, but you know, you, uh, you made me delete a whole Xbox Live account. <laughs> oh, I mean, that was, because we used to be proud about our one, our one plus ratio, you know what I mean? That was so, hard to get, too. If you played, you know, 1, 2, and 3, and if you played in hardcore, like we did, it's it's hard to keep that up that high. Uh, it's something to be proud of, absolutely. And then when you let uh, your friend or significant Life. other... <laughs> I was going to say, um, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm just as bad. I wasn't going to put you on blast. Uh, You're I'm... not the only one either, though, to be fair. <laughs> She's a big... Fu We're Bethesda people. We yeah. like the solo individual gameplay games i don't I'm not i was gonna say not gamer. just bethesda i like to play by myself i don't want to be fucked with with other people so you see grand theft auto 5 did that to me oh, I, I love, love the, that. i love the story but the online is so hard to play because I, everyone no, wants to i don't want to play online off. i don't want to play online yeah. nothing i want to be solo by myself red dead red dead 2 and That's... red dead was fine i'm s i've never stepped foot it, on online red dead 2 no i haven't either but Damn, is it so freaking long. I still haven't completed the story. I haven't though. either. And I know how it's going to end, and I don't want to finish it for that reason. <laughs> I mean, I love that game, but it's... it's like, I was playing Ark for a while, and that game sucks the life out of you. It's an awesome game, and if you play it long enough, you'll like... Uh, you, you'll accept the errors that go on in that game, even though that game's already about four or five years old. Mm -hmm. But you'll accept all the little things, and it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's an awesome game. But then you you turn around and you've wasted five isn't months it, of your life. Isn't it still an unfinished game? Uh, no, it's it's finished, but they keep adding on to it. Like I the, remember, uh, the base uh, game came out, in, I think fifteen, 
and I uh, had the beta, and when that game released, uh, it was completed. Yeah, because the beta way. you could buy for like thirty dollars. It was twenty. I got it for twenty. You got, and it would give you the game when it actually yeah, released. Yeah, I got it. I paid but you had to bucks. accept all the changes as they came. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. But there are a lot of additions onto that game that you could play on different maps. You can play with different uh, uh, tools on different maps. Different maps have different. Tools. If uh, I have a buddy named Ed who refuses to listen, but if he ever listens, he will fucking love you, Bob. No, he Ark. will love you. He's a big Ark fan. Well, he's a big game fan. Yeah. yeah. Ark will take your life over, though, so I had to stop. I had to stop. So, uh, some new shit in the music world. I'm, I'm tired of the game talk already, dude. I don't know why. Uh, new shit in the music world. Uh, J-Lo is being talked about for the Super Bowl halftime show. Have you, have you seen that? Yep. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I don't, I don't even know if I consider her part of the music world anymore, to be real. Really. I don't know what I consider her. She's just a famous person. I mean, at this point, is it, uh, is it a mix between trying to find someone that's safe and someone who's willing to do it still? Right. I mean, well, who was your favorite halftime show? Are you asking me now or of all time? Of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Janet Jackson. Oh. Oh. I was a kid at the time. You can't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what about yours? Well, I mean, you already oh, know. We already talked about it. All right, all right. No, Bruno, Bruno Mars, man. Yep. He 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 showed He's the whole a, world the entertainer. Yeah. I mean, the, the He's come a little out, show off. Play like, the drums like he did. I mean, that was pretty impressive. Half we went to show. his concert. I mean, he just like puts his all in everything. Drove six hours Hell to yeah, go see did. this man. One and day. Then drove six hours home. Yep. Oof. But it was fun. In it Philadelphia. I would never so. go back to Philadelphia. Yeah. I know it's just a what, city of love or whatever. Brotherly yeah, love. Right. Brotherly love. Yeah. Oh, well, you guys keep it. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> That's like I, Pittsburgh. I like Pittsburgh, the, the, the team, but I'll never drive through Pittsburgh again. Uh, have you heard of a rock band called Ghost? No. Nope. Ed, this is also for you, if you listen. Uh, they are currently doing a giveaway. Well, it's actually like a, and then, uh, you have to enter to try to win like tickets to their show, but you also win a an exclusive Funko Pop, which actually kind of looked cool. I'm not into the band. Yeah, it's like uh, they got the face makeup, look like yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay, all right, kind of, yeah, all right, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So I'm not really into. I'm not a heavy metal guy. We are trying to open our uh, horizons, I guess. Is that what it's called? Expand your horizons. I got an unpopular opinion. I think heavy metal, especially like doom metal and black metal, would be. I I, I would love them so much more if they just shut the fuck up. There's yeah. a uh, <laughs> if you no. don't scream or if you yeah. chant, I don't want to hear it. Just play the music. Speaking of, real fast, the Funko Pop thing Chris mentioned. Ned. Uh, yeah, he you had he had it. to say it. Ned. He just had to say it. Yep. I, well, I'm not, I wasn't gonna let her get it out. Nope, of course not. <laughs> Nothing. Anybody who popular. follows Twenty One Pilots knows who Ned is. Danny, how do you feel about getting this Ned Funko Pop? I mean, I would like to have it. I All just... right. So here's how this is gonna go down. I am getting it. <laughs> <laughs> the moment it is announced that they're on sale, I am buying it. I don't know how many I'm buying, but I'm probably going to get as many as they'll let me because I have a couple people who can't afford them, and I'd like them to have them too. So I will be getting a Ned Funko. If you guys want to win one, let us know. I might well, get you one. We still have to get one first. For, yeah, so for us. <laughs> I mean, because uh, we – all right, so we were at the uh, the pop-up shop in Columbus, the uh, Ned Bayou. Yep. And that was just so fucking cool, man. It was definitely worth the wait. And uh, I saw – that people were selling these shirts that were exclusive at this Ned Ned's Bayou. How much do you think they were getting, Bobby? For a Ned shirt? Yeah. I have no idea. Hundred and seventy five dollars. Yeah. Fuck me running. Holy yeah, shit. so I came up with the genius plan to hit people up and say, Hey man, <laughs> just throw me a little something extra for waiting there. But then I found out that the the people who listen to Twenty One Pilots call themselves clickies. Clicks. Please know I'm yeah. not a part of that. I'm not a part of the click. I'm not doing something for you for absolutely free. My time is valuable to me. So uh, I'm not a part of the whole clicky thing. And if you want it for free, you're hitting up the wrong person. There's a difference between being a clicky and someone that really likes the yeah, music. Yeah, just because I we don't... have uh, the same taste in music doesn't mean I owe you any fucking thing. So when yeah. did that start? When people started I don't know, like nicknames? being a cult? Like Believer like... <laughs> and Beehive and yeah, Clicky. Yeah, kind of weird. Beehive. Where did that start? Yeah, it's weird. Like the uh, stands, It's just weird. Uh, the be- yeah, like you said, Beehive. I mean, Zeppelins. You don't hear what do they call like... the Taylor, Taylor Swift? What Taylor is that? Gang. The Taylor, the Taylor Gang. Taylor Gang? Oh, I bet Wiz Khalifa's happy about that. What the fuck? I think that's what it is. I mean, that'd be pretty cool. 
I mean, yeah. thing. I don't know what. All right, yeah. You think I mean, they actually walk around and do the same thing the Wiz Khalifa fans do? <laughs> Taylor Gang. Taylor Gang. <laughs> Taylor made to <her> die. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not a. I, I like music. I'm not affiliated with any group of fans yeah. because I mean I'm a big fan. Don't get me wrong. I love. I'm a huge fan. I'm probably one of the biggest fans of the music that I listen to. But you guys, man. You act like that. You act like I should give you the shirt off my fucking back, man. I don't know you. You don't know me. Get the fuck out of here, man. Come on. Uh, so there's that. If you guys would like to win one, let us know. Uh, I am going to meet Elvis Duran next month. I'm pretty fucking excited. That's awesome. I'm really excited. I uh, bought him and I bought him and Alex a uh, wedding card that I intend to hand him in person, which I thought was cool. He's doing a book signing here in uh, Parma, actually. Yeah. So. You know what we still got to do? What? Deprivation tank. Oh, I shit. thought about that a couple weeks ago. Oh, and then, shit. Uh, Anybody I ever do a uh, deprivation <laughs> tank? Oh, no, the sensory no, deprivation tanks? If you have, please email me and let me know what you think of them. Man, I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear about My fucking dogs are going crazy, dude. Fucking Just going crazy. crazy. Actually, so I wanted you guys to hear how dumb these dogs are right. <laughs> and how, how much they love me. So I actually recorded a little clip of whenever Danny and I, we came home sometime this week. And keep in mind, nobody ever comes to our house. So it's always the same people who walk through that door. And I want you to hear just how <laughs> fucking throw, crazy, the garage how too. crazy do they sound. You hear that? That is Sam and the rest of the animal barking because we just got home. They don't get any visitors, so I don't know why they act this way. They know it's only us, Danny and Chris. Yeah, so that's what I get to deal with. I know Bobby, he has a couple dogs, too. Well, no, you're only Just down to one, one now. Down Poor Peanut. She had to get put down. Was it put yeah. down? Yeah. She Old had, dog. Uh, she had cancer, and, Ooh, uh, sadly, yeah. yeah. Uh, we we didn't want to do it, but we didn't want her to suffer. So man, she was like another sand though. That fucking dog barked at every goddamn thing. Last couple of years, she hey. hadn't really. So you know, uh, it's it's weird though. That dog was all around for almost sixteen yeah. years of my life. So with that being said, what is your favorite dog moment with her? Oh shit, um, <laughs> so many. I mean, it depends on what you mean by favorite. Like, there's times we're just sitting there watching TV. There's times we're out in the yard playing. I mean, when it snowed and there'd be anything more than five or six inches of snow, she would disappear. <laughs> yeah. And that was funny just to see her jump out and just completely disappear through the snow. But, uh, I mean, times like that, you know, there's so many of them you can't really, uh, you know, you can't take a, take a whole day to sit down and write them down. But, yeah. uh, you know, that's what, uh, you know, that's what you're left with, though. I mean, that's, to me, though, life is about stories and experiences. And uh, you got to collect some, you know, of each. Uh Yes. Oh, no doubt, man. I, uh, I, it took me a long time to get to that point because everybody says, you know, without my dog, I don't know what I would do. And I never, never thought, never, I, I could never find myself loving something like that. You know, like I know it's going to pass away one day. How can I love it that much? But yeah, I'm there. Yeah. I know exactly how it feels, man. Uh, I recently let Sam start to cuddle with me. Uh, he used to have to sleep at the bottom of the bed. That was always his, he would have to sleep at the bottom of the bed and you just to monster. see. Just yeah. to see how excited he is to fucking inch his way up. Like, that's cool, man. He, yeah, our dogs, Sam, Kumar, and Minnie, they mean a lot to me. Yeah, what yeah. about you, Danny? Well, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I mean, I love them all, but Bubbub is my baby. I mean, I love them all, but have, if uh, I had to choose one. <laughs> have you ever watched The Umbrella Academy? No. No? All right, so we're not going to talk about that this week, then. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, well, I hope he does get to talk about it. Uh, uh, so it's a really good show. Mm -hmm. uh, Gerard Way is the creator of the uh, comic book. He's actually the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. He, uh, if that's the one I'm thinking of, I think he worked for Nickelodeon for a short time. Maybe. And uh, I don't know if he was an animator, but he was definitely on the staff. Uh, he actually did that before he formed the band My Chemical Romance. Mm. If that's the one I'm thinking Eventually, of. whenever we do discuss it, because maybe season two we'll do that, we have a giveaway planned for one of his original pieces. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but you have to watch it to understand. Is that on I... Netflix? Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Uh, some more news. Uh, tomorrow, which will be Saturday, uh, maybe today, if you guys are here, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Eminem, his kill shot is 200,000 views away from hitting that 300 million view mark. 
and tomorrow is one year since he's released it. So people are doing what they've called the kill shot streaming party. Oh. And I will be participating. I see. I, uh, like I said, I don't pick a side in the beef, but I will definitely uh, boost those views. <laughs> uh, so 9-11 just happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually, I work with this kid who graduated uh, just last year. He's 19 years old, and he said he learned about it in a history book. Yeah. Blew well, my fucking mind. Dude. We're at that age now, man, where 9-11 isn't something that... Ain't that fucking crazy, happened crazy, like, like, a couple years ago. Ain't, ain't it crazy, though? Like, yeah. this is something that they're actually teaching in the yeah. history book. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's weird, though, that we, you know, most of us who actually went to school that day saw it on yeah. TV, you know. In Mr. No Gay's class. class, yeah. I didn't go to school that day. There's a moment, like, everybody, everybody on this podcast shared a moment that changed their lives forever with somebody else. You know what I mean? Like, that is yeah. weird. It's weird that I work with somebody who has no idea, no recollection of what the fuck 9-11 was. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it doesn't seem real to them. I mean, like, I feel like they know the impact it had, but they don't. Well, that's kind of like asking you, you know, you know, where were you when Gulf War One? Right, no, off, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, it's so. just... I feel like 9-11 is the biggest tragedy to ever touch America. I mean, it is. I mean, so, it is in modern times anyway. We're not going to go back too far in history because... Uh, <laughs> so I was reading, 18 years later, you know, the largest legacy of firefighters are about to graduate and become a part of the uh, fire department in New York. What that means is they have the largest class of children of firefighters who lost their lives on 9-11. Wow. Yeah. So 13 children... Of the firefighters are about to graduate and be firefighters themselves. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Carry on the tradition and uh, being a hero. Yeah. What about that Apple shit, Danny? What oh, about yeah. Apple? So Apple announced the iPhone 11 Pro. And people are hating on it because it has three camera, like the lenses. And there's a term called, let me look at it, tripophobia. I guess it's an intense emotional reaction to clustered patterns of holes or bumps, according to dictionary.com. But real. did you, I'm being serious, there's a whole tr- like Twitter trend thing going on that people are like, you're really testing my tripophobia, is what it's called. Word of the day. It's that, and, and I can barely pronounce it, but it's just a bunch of holes or bumps clustered together that people I'm not an hate. Apple fanatic. I've never been. I don't fuck with Yeah, Apple. I don't mess with Apple either, but I thought it was funny because that is, weird. <laughs> that is what they got from the <laughs> iPhone convention or whatever Apple convention that just went on. I don't know, Chris, what is it called? That they I, I think it's like the Apple Day, pretty much. Yeah, it's called where, Apple where they Day. released all this. Not, and that's, not 314, by the way. Well, that's uh, what they came up day. with is yeah. uh, the clustered... So lenses or whatever. <laughs> what do the three lenses do? I mean, I guess it has something to do with the better, cameras. Uh, better they, picture. I know that they're they've introduced something that's going to be a part of the uh, iPhone 11 called the slow fee. You ever heard of this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I no, but I can I can take a guess. Uh, what you got? The slow mo. It's just going to be slow motion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is going to be a selfie that is taken in video form, slow motion. What you need it for? I don't know. Maybe like a selfie to make GIF. Cool videos. Well, the slow mo guy should be happy about that. <laughs> uh, they've also announced that come November first, they're gonna be launching a gaming subscription that will cost five dollars a month for your whole family to play up to one hundred mobile video games. How cool! Mobile games are the best. Well, we had to. I mean, this was bound to happen at some point. They're garbage. Who the fuck wants mobile games, dude? You'd be surprised. A lot of people. A bunch of old people. No, no. Young people too. I don't know too many candy crushers anymore, It's not just candy crush anymore. Those are, you gotta be super, all right. So anytime I see my wife playing a mobile game, that means I am failing to entertain. (laughs) It's, I mean, it's, it's, that's that's what it means to me. I don't know. You're telling me she's always playing mobile games? Oh, <laughs> he just got ripped. Where's that paper? Well, no I mean, uh, what was the? Didn't they release uh, Skyrim mm. on uh, Alexa? I don't know. I remember I the don't... E? I think it was E three or was it before that? Uh, it was. It started out as a joke, and then they actually went through and made it. And I, I'm curious to see if that's going to be a trend. You know, um, assistant games. Are you going to go see? Are you going to go see uh, Joker? Yeah, actually, I am. A lot of good reviews about that. Very I don't. Surprised. I don't know why I just cut you off, but for right, some right. reason, Joker caught, hopped into my mind. Oh, 
Uh, Rih- Rih- yeah, Rihanna is going to be playing Poison Ivy in a new Batman movie. How do you it, feel about it? Well, I it's mean, a rumor. It's a rumor. But I, I can see it. I can see it. I don't know how our acting is, though. That's no, what, Rihanna, that's she I'm was in about. Ocean's 12. Or that Ocean's Girls. The Ocean's, Ocean's 12. Eight, was Eight. It? Yeah. If you know, let me know. I mean, I can Google it, but you can let me know, too. <laughs> yeah. I think it was Ocean's 8. He's right. Uh, no, I don't know how good of an actress she might be, but I think it, whatever. I mean, she might have the, the, you know, the aesthetic for it, but I'm worried about any time Batman and characters are, in, you know, mentioned, I'm worried automatically yeah. because I'm, aside from Christopher Nolan's trilogy, I have not liked any Batman since the original Batman Well, did you begins. hear about the new Batman they're talking about? No. Um, what's his name? Robert? Robert Pat- Pattinson. Oh, Yeah, the no, freaking yeah. Twilight guy. <laughs> I feel bad for him because even he, he Wait, hated what? those movies. Twilight? He's the vampire guy. He's the fucking... That's no, Robert shit. Pattinson, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I, I mean, You're going to go from for Ben him. Affleck to well, Robert Ben Affleck Pattinson? wasn't exactly a best choice either. I so. did hear... Uh, I don't know who gave the advice. Uh, give me some... Who all has played Batman? And uh, maybe the name will hit. Who was it? Who uh, all has well, played? Well, you have uh, uh, Michael Keaton. Nope. You have George, uh, George Clooney. Nope. Um, what about Val Kilmer? He played him. Maybe, yeah, all right. He played him. That sounds like the guy who might have given the advice. He said to Robert Pattinson... That no superhero is super if he has to have help to use the restroom. And it was pretty much implying that he should make sure that when they make the costume, don't make it too tight. Oh, okay. <laughs> you had me confused there for a second. I was I going, was is, he, is he coming back to play Batman? He needs help to get out of his wheelchair? Is that uh, what you're I don't know. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, honestly, I can't see this Twilight fella being... I'll, I'll give him a chance. Oh, uh, yeah. Give him a chance. They can't get much worse. Who was no. the girl that played in Twilight? What was uh, her name? Kristen Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. So she was recently uh, in Mouse the news baby. because of uh, somebody told her, hey, if you weren't I so hear. open about your relationship relationships, status. you would have probably been in a Marvel film by now. Yeah. That's kind of fucked. What's up with her relationship? Uh, well, she's she lesbian. doesn't. Well, she doesn't identify as lesbian, what, does well, she? What about she Ruby Rose? Much. Isn't she Batgirl? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think Shit, guys. We are. TV, isn't she? I apologize for the length. We are above the 57-minute mark, and Danny's looking annoyed, but this is going. We're, <laughs> we're mean, dragging yeah. it on. And I've also been told that, whatever, man, you guys don't mind how long we take it. And I don't mind. I like to talk. You can always listen in parts. Yeah, it's fine when you talk, but... You cut me off like five, six times already, so Ooh. that's when I get a little... We get in heated! <laughs> Who's in their car thinking Chris is about to get slapped? I'm not going to slap you, but I'm just saying. So Danny, I'm call you out. Danny and I have both been uh, given a task to talk about whether or not Lizzo's Truth Hurts has ripped off Ray Shrimmer's Black Beetle. Do you remember Black Beetle's? That girl is a real crowd pleaser. Okay, very. All right, all right. and you know the truth hurts. No. Nope. Uh, I mean, I, don't know the I names. can't play it for you, but it goes, uh, I'm a 100 percent that bitch. That's right. Uh, come on, Danny. Come on, help me. I don't know the words. <laughs> oh man, I'm on the spot. I don't know the fucking words. Uh, I don't know, Chris. Uh, <laughs> uh shit, man. This come is, on. Uh, just became my favorite part of the podcast. It goes. Go uh, ahead, a bad bitch. Non-committal. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Settle down or help to improve your life. Just a little, I don't know how it goes, man. But uh, it's a good song. She goes, Truth, that oh, shit, man. I can't because I have Black I Beetle stuck in my head. <laughs> I can't get the lyrics for Truth Hurts out. And it's funny because now it does. Now that I'm trying to think of it, maybe you're maybe they're right. Maybe Truth Hurts. I'm just saying it's a very, very, very It big might have stretch. piggybacked off of Black Beetle. Oh, why man great till they gotta be great. Don't text me, tell it straight to my face. Best friend sat me down in a salon chair. Shampoo press, get you out of my hair. All right. Fresh photos with the bomb lighting. New man on the Minnesota Vikings. (laughs) Then he goes, truth hurts, needed something more exciting. Bum, bum, biddy, da bum, bum, boo. You know it? I just want to let everyone know Chris was dancing that entire time. (laughs) I got it out, y'all. He dropped it pretty low. Uh, Sorry, we don't have video for that. Here we go. Uh, So... You know the Black Beatles. I just sing that Truth Hurts in the melody that she sings it. Do okay. you? Can you compare them? Sure. Would you? Do you <laughs> think? All right. So the the request was 
did Black Beetle or did Truth Hurts rip off Black Beetles? Where are we at, Danny? Did I it? think they were talking about the instrumental, which it's a very, very, very like long stretch. I I, mean, yeah, I can are. barely hear like a similarity, but you played Chris the mashup. Insists, what did you think I, of the mashup? I felt like they just played Truth Hurts over the damn mashup. It didn't even sound. I wish like, we could play you guys mashup. But we're not allowed, obviously. Yeah. Well, I mean, you just sang most of one of the songs. Well, no, they—they. They ta- I've, I've looked it up. I'm allowed to sing anything I fucking want. <laughs> well, because it's like uh, satire or something. Well, I don't know what it. I'm. I. It's not I don't know. the original content. Uh, what, what's the yeah? What's the word? For My that? voice isn't copywritten. Yeah. Fair use. Uh, Unless you copyright it. So well, I'm. I'm going. I mean, if this says my voice is ever worth anything, feel free to use it as you please. Unless it's like you know derogatory. <laughs> And please know. send me that audio. <laughs> uh, Danny. Yeah. We have a lot of subjects to get through. I know. Keep going. People are trying to say that Halsey's new song "Graveyard" is about my man Gerald Gillum. G Easy. How do you feel? I mean, I only listened to half of the song, so I don't know. I'm going with no. No. I don't uh. Know. It if it is, him. that's really weird because like it was about how she would be there for you, and I don't think she's there for him. No. She's a good artist. If that's her in the music video, man, I applaud that. Yeah. Uh, really good artist. Or whoever did that painting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, I don't want to doubt that she's artistically inclined. But whoever did, we want to give you credit for way, that. Painting. Yeah. Mad props. Uh. Shit. Let's just move on. Move along. Move along. Yeah. How much crap do you have there? <sighs> well. So. All right, have you ever heard of the $5 challenge, Bobby? No. What is the $5 challenge? So Danny discovered it. Uh, how long have we been doing it? Uh, a couple months. Yeah, I would say, I'll say about eight weeks we've been doing what is called the $5 challenge. And what it says is that anytime, and you need to carry, you need to, you need to have cash, okay? So anytime you go out for like a date or whatever, uh, plan to take cash with you. Instead of sliding your card, because it's so easy to slide card anymore. Instead of sliding your card, pull out, you know, your minimum that you want to spend for the day. Or your maximum, maximum, not not minimum. minimum. (laughs) Pull out the maximum that you want to spend for the day. Now, anytime you are out and about and you you get change back, anytime you get a five, you put that five into a pocket so it won't be spent. And whenever you get home, every five that is in that pocket goes into a bucket. And then you save it for a couple months. Hmm. It's called a $5 challenge. We are currently, I mean, we've got like $400 saved almost because of this $5 challenge. Well... I cheat a little bit. Every week I do, uh, my, my work allows us to have, like, go, when you put a five in, you give five gold dollars back. Oh, okay, yeah. Instead of, you know, quarters. Yeah. I like so I, I have a jar full of gold dollars, too. I like yeah. the coins, honestly. I wish we'd moved over to dollar coins a long time ago. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, would be pretty heavy to have a Yeah, just have a... <laughs> well, I mean, you're going to have a hundred ones on you, too. That's a lot. I mean, shit. Yeah. Uh... Speaking of, like, uh, the ones, you just made me think of tips, tipping people. And tipping people made me think of this dinner that we well, had. Yeah, strippers couple. probably wouldn't like the... the no, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dance for your dollar. <laughs> Bam. You know? You just gave her a concussion. Cinnamon knocked out on the stage. <laughs> we need security up here. This man's got too much money. He made it rain. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm seeing... What is it? I'm seeing stars. <laughs> All right, so Danny and I, we were at dinner a couple weeks ago at the, what the fuck, some steakhouse. I'm not going to say the name. doesn't yeah. matter. What, Chop House? No. Uh, no. Chop House, which, by the way, if you're from around here, don't, I, we, we, what was, there was so much hype about how great that place was. How was your first experience at the Chop House, Danny? Uh, mine wasn't bad. I think it was, um. <laughs> we were with a his, friend. Yes, his friend's and, girlfriend, and she was not happy about the, um, pasta she got it was supposed to be like a shrimp um i don't know but there was like three pieces of shrimp in it and she was pissed oh my god oh no yeah she threw a bitch fit it was so funny though but uh no we were at a we were in a steakhouse and uh i noticed something very almost like sexist yeah every time this country song would i don't know what the fucking song is and it doesn't matter but every time this country song would come on the women had to dance, all right? And I knew it was the women because I, I fucking, for some reason, I was I fucking this, uh, and I was I fucking him. Yeah. Words I, carefully let here. me take that back. For some reason, this bus boy <laughs> had reminded me of Danielle's younger brother, and my eyes would not get off of him for some reason. <laughs> and like I said, this song came on, and this, this guy went on to do his own thing. 
while all these girls were forced to dance all like sultry and seductive. And that just that bothers me, man. Yeah. Why do you have to dance and why do you have to be It's like every ten minutes too objectified. <laughs> I know which place you're talking about yeah. too. I mean that that was a good novelty when it first started because oh that's funny, yeah. And then Yeah, but it's annoying while, like, now. Yeah, it's just like let me have my steak. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. Yeah. Give my damn check, please. Well yeah. you know that the women I'm waiting there to drink and they're all dancing over there. Like, I don't come feel, on. That's what like, lemonade. I don't yeah. feel like they want to be doing it either though. Probably like, not, would you? No. I mean, fuck you, no. hey, get off get off your motor right now. Hey, do some dancing. Like, all right, every ten minutes. It's bad enough they gotta sing whack. happy birthday. Why the yeah. fuck why the fuck are they forced to do that? Uh, I don't know if they're the forced or I mean it looks forced. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> no, gonna say, no. I'm definitely gonna say it's part of the job description. I'm really hoping that Danny, you know, at the hospital they don't have a song that plays every half hour and she's gonna dance. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Chris, that's what we do Let's in the hospital. cheer our patients up. No. I, th- I think that's the Weird Al song, like a surgeon. They play it the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> stop and dance <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. Oh, shit. You, we have one forgot. final subject, and it's from my man, Ryan. No, the Chinese. Well, I got, and we got the Today I Learned, but that's no. not a sub. What? Are we going to talk about it? Oh, shit. Oh. All right. We won't spoil it. We're not going to. No spoilers, oh. and, but really, you should have probably I mean, it, it, seen it by now. Yeah. This is a remake of a made-for-TV movie from 89, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, something. So, it's old. I've never yeah. actually seen the original all the way I through. I did. Really? We bought it, and he won't watch it because he saw how long it is. Oh, no. But man. it's like... Well, all right. So, well, you see this three-hour movie. It <laughs> it too was three hours. Yeah, I saw crazy. both It of them. won. Oh, what was saw that? You saw them back-to-back. At the okay. Drive-in. Fuck that, Well, then dude. we can spoil it. How okay. long was that? Well, I mean... Some other people might How know. fucking long was that? Was well, long. then, we got if there you don't want to hear any spoilers, then you better just... If you don't want any spoilers, skip, spoiler alert. skip 30, skip 30, skip 30, skip 30. Oh, here we are. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it it was great. Uh, Danny, first impressions, go. Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard not to jump. In this damn movie. Oh, that, jump scares out the The ass. jump scares were so ridiculous, but the one part that got me, like, so freaked out was the little girl under the bleacher. Like, oh, yeah. That yeah. fucking pissed me. I don't that know. One. Like, he ate her, right? Well, he well, waited. He counted down, and she saw her waiting, and she waited, and then soon as she said, and she's supposed to say, and he... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that was one of those, like, some like, parts in movies I like that they don't expect them to show what I they know, show. I know, but I jumped. I'm, like, yeah. waiting, and he's drooling. I'm, like, I didn't even think about it. And then she's, like, aren't you supposed I'm, like, oh, shit, bitch. You don't say no. that. <laughs> Who do you think? All right, in my eyes, Bill Hader made the movie. That it, that he, comical relief you know what's funny about that movie that? tremendously. The younger version of him in the original, you know, It Part 1 made that movie, too, I think. Mm-hmm. Honestly. What was his name? Finn Wolfhard? I don't know. He was in uh, Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. You he thought that he that. was... Oh, I yeah. thought the kid from uh, Shazam was the one that made it one. I didn't know. Uh, that. He played uh, what the fuck was that movie or what? What was his name? Eric? No. Or what was the what was the character like? What hey, I'll show. I'm, I'm gonna what, look what, him up right now. Well, I mean, this is an audio podcast yeah. though too. So what was the trait? It part <laughs> two. Well, he'd be one part one because he'd be a kid, right? And you wonder oh, how it's uh, else is messed up. Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, yeah. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie Crashback or whatever. Casper. He is fucking hun- funny, man. He was, yeah. yeah he he was. was. He was pretty funny. And the adult version was hilarious, too. He was pretty good at that. Now, I mean, I, I know this is, we're already in spoiler territory, yeah. but what did you guys think about the direction they took with those two characters? What do you mean? Like the gay, like well, yeah, uh, love. Yeah. Oh, are they gay? They well, weren't, well, they weren't. It yeah. wasn't, like, fully known, like, um, I don't know the name. Because I kind of caught this vibe, but I didn't know. Well, yeah, the... The, the one with the glasses. Yeah, what was he, his... he was gay. He was gay, and, but uh, it was, he, like, secretly. Yeah, he was closeted, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Eddie uh, and Richie? Yeah. Yeah. Richie, Richie was the one that was gay. Bill Hader was gay? Yeah. What? Yeah. No way. Oh, All right. then you missed it. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it was a big plot point. Yeah. I mean, there was the, the Some, fence where he carved uh, his well, initials into it. Oh, all right. So I was wondering, I wanted to ask Danny about that because yes. it was Eddie, it was his R-E, initial. Yeah. In the, all right. So here's the thing. All right. Uh, the theater that we saw it in was real small. It was one of the small theaters oh at God, Regal. Yeah. And like, it was already packed full when we got there. So the only seats that were really <laughs> good for us were directly behind the handicap seats. And there was a rail right behind the handicap seats. So I was literally like... <laughs> I couldn't man spread if if I had to put it in like better terms. I couldn't spread my legs out, and I was I was very uncomfortable. So I kind of wanted the movie to hurry up. I mean, 
So, like, I kind of lost a lot of detail. I was just in a hurry to get out of there. I do know that, like, I enjoyed the movie, but I didn't enjoy my seat. Yeah, as much as I want to go to one of those movie theaters with the big white back oh, seats. Oh, Santa like Mark Cinemark, is the yeah. shit, dude. I gotta say, man, the drive-in is nice because 20 bucks for two movies. Yeah. Plus, you can get up and stretch, walk around. Go How fucking food. long was that, though? It had to be been it, five hours. It was pretty goddamn long. I, I mean, bet. It was, yeah. I mean, we got there, and it was playing. You know, we, we showed up just as the first one started, but we wanted to catch up. You know, right. that's why we watched them both. And it was, uh, yeah, an excruciating experience. But it was nice because I can get up and stretch, and I'm not mm-hmm. walking someone behind me. Uh, but, yeah, those movies, man, I mean, I, I like the original because Tim, Curry, Tim Curry's It was uh I think more creepy. I felt like it was cheesy though, man. I look at I look at some of like the honest trailers for the original and it does. It looks super well, fucking cheesy. But the time. for that time it and, was scary as And crap. I guess for being an on T V with it, all these rules it was alright. Here's another one to think about. That it just looking at him in his regular it clown form, not scary, right? Right. So feasibly He'd be easier to attract kids than, you know, Skarsgård. Yeah, Skarsgård scared the fuck out of me. You know who that is? (laughs) You know what else that Skarsgård plays on? Uh, No, I know the name, though. There's a lot of them. uh, He is in, uh, fuck, man, what the fuck is this goddamn movie? Danny, you know him. Uh, Skarsgård, he's a good actor, though. I mean, mean, a lot of those scenes that that he was playing Pennywise. He's in Deadpool. On point. But Castle Rock. Have you watched Castle Rock on Hulu? Oh, God, that creeped me out, too. Good fucking show, man. Good show. Mm -hmm. Hmm. He's just a creepy dude. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing against him, but yeah, he he does have those eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, Uh, before they put him in makeup, he did the smile, and it was like, oh, he's going to be great. (laughs) Yeah. But Tim Curry's was, like I said, I think it was good because it had that facade of you know he's what just I like, a clown. Though, um, they brought the one line into the new movies. like the kiss, Fritchie? Well, Kiss Me, Fat Boy. That. Oh, yeah, I lost it at that one. Kiss Me, Fat Boy. Oh, that oh, was, my it? God. That was yeah. in the original? That was in the original, right. yeah. And B.B. Right. Fritchie. Yeah. They, they did that one in the first one. Uh, that one had a lot more screen time in the original. But, yeah, in the first one they did that again. Uh, I think more of a callback than anything else, because that's yeah. the only time I've ever heard it. And then uh, the latest It that was released. I'm a fan of these remakes. I think the direction we're heading with movies, it's awesome to see what a movie could have been with this technology. Some of them, though. Some of them. No, yeah, they're brilliant. killing stuff. Like, honestly, One Pet Cemetery thing. was kind of doo-doo. One really? more thing on the It thing. I didn't like Pet Cemetery. It was... Were we on It? One more, one more thing. Okay. Okay. What did you think about um, when that... I can't say... I'm bad at names, guys. You'll find that out real quick. So the girl and the yeah. older woman, what did you think when she had to go get her token, like, uh, what she had to deal with? Oh, yeah, the old the lady? The freaking, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, dude, what the fuck was that? I've I'm watched like, that what? teaser trailer a dozen times, and then when, because they don't show what she turns around to. Hell no. And when they did that, I did. Well, I, she seemed like a psychopath Well, at I'm, first. Like, I'm like, this Chris, bitch is nuts. When she, like, peeped the corner, like, you couldn't tell, like, she was, like, Chris, <laughs> I think that, she's, yeah. like, freaking naked. Like, I'm like, oh, I, yeah, you did say, you, she said that, too. And then all of a sudden, her fucking, now, I'm like, oh, my God, she's naked. I am disappointed about one thing in those movies. And you know if you go watch the trailer, that sound that they play, that almost sounds like kids laughing, it's real mm-hmm. kind of distorted. Da, na, 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 na. They didn't play that in the movie itself, and I'm so no. disappointed. Hmm. Because, like, Insidious had a sound to it that you really got you. The Witch, that's another movie. That, that soundtrack made that movie just, uh. that made my skin Well, cry. a lot of the older movies relied on a soundtrack. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. I see the trailer and I hear that. But they missed an opportunity, I think, to put that in the movie and really up the creepy factor. But it was they were both really good movies, I think. I liked yeah. the first a little better than the sequel. Yeah. But uh, still very good. All right, so uh, her bringing up It, we actually decided next month, all of October, her and I, you could actually partake if you want, we're going to, every week, we're going to watch some shitty B-rated horror movie and we're going to review them. Oh, yep. that's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So... If, if you, you guys have any suggestions, yeah, dude, please email feel Chris. Feel free, because, I mean, I want the crappiest fucking horror movies you could think of. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Not Are like you... Eight-Legged Freaks or no. nothing like that. Because... Right, is this going to be like, you know, we just sit here and do a quick review, or are you going to do a longer... You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe not like super quick, but not like super extended. Maybe like a twenty five minute review. Okay, we'll get like yeah. that. I don't know. I feel like this it thing was definitely a quick run, dry, yeah. you know, dry run review, whatever. Play with the format uh, a little bit. So here's what we got, uh, Ryan. The uh, 
the Chinese ghost cities, man. I did some research, all right? Here's my research. China consists of 1.3 billion people, which is fucking... That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. the most populous country in the world. So, what about these cities that are emerging from nowhere? You know what I mean? Like, one day they're not there, and literally, they're saying two weeks later they can have a city built. It's like a city in a box. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. I don't know how fast they're building them. Look, I can't I, build my fucking Lego sets as quick as they're building <laughs> some of these cities, man. I've heard a lot uh, of theories on this, too. Like, what do you have, though? Well, what, um, are, what are your theories? What have you heard? Uh, some of the ones I've heard is that they're, they're mock-up cities for uh, for war games. They're mock-up cities for bombing attacks and things oh. like that. Oh, well, I didn't other hear all that. Yeah, no, yeah. my research did not take me in that direction. Uh, Mine but was that saying would seem more reasonable. Well, that's why they're, they're put up where... quick. Well... One of the things was that uh, every city at one time was a new city. All right, so you had to try to populate it. You know what I mean? They're tr they're trying to move people from like she said, overpopulated places to less populated places. Yeah, and I did hear that was another one. Yeah. I heard. Yeah, but it's were, not working. It's in a build of dreams. Like it's not build it and they will come because they're not coming. Yeah. yeah, and I think the reason is the cost of living. You what you're trying to charge? They got this hotel. Uh, 30 floors, they built it in two weeks. Uh, the, the cost of building it was so much that the cost of rent is too much for these people who are making two bucks an hour. Yeah. Well, I mean, organically, can you can't create what cities normally grow into organically. Like, New York City is New York City for a reason because of the, you know, proximity to the harbor and the trade. They have a city that they think is going to compete with Manhattan. Okay. In China? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's going to be, they want it to be considered to be the world's biggest financial city. Hmm. Yet, there's nobody there. No oh, yeah. life at all. Uh, the researcher who was there uh, for 60 Minutes described it as frozen in time. Uh, the current state of construction is on hold. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's fucking got, you know, it's got stoplights that actually work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. functioning, it's a fucking real it's a city. Town. Yeah, they're just, they're ready for the people. But yeah. it's like walking around the walking dead, man. It's fucking weird. And then again, I just want to go on record as to say right now, I look forward to worshiping our Chinese overlords when they do take over. <laughs> just going to say that right now. I'm, I'm not against it at all. Please don't kill me. No, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just weird, man. It, and it's been described as strange and eerie. If you're in these places, it's very eerie which i can understand it's, yeah absolutely you've driven down through country land and seen like you know desolation but you've never seen anything that was a city in desolation yeah yeah that that would have to be a sight to see for sure but, uh, uh danny you i know you did a little bit of research what are your thoughts on this ghost city thing ryan you came up with a good subject by the way i already told you what i thought well what i mean what else you got add to what we got i don't know i didn't would you move to one? What, no. did I, what did I cut you off on? If in America, <laughs> if America started building I don't remember what you these, cut me off on, Chris. If Just, America started building cities like this, would you move to one if they said, hey, we'll give you a, a move-in bonus? Of if they what? give me money to move in, yes, I would, because I'm very, um, what is it, secluded I person? I don't think she would. Oh, Chris, yeah, I guess she's right. We Chris are, would cry because I made a move to the country anyways. <laughs> Dude. My septic tank is fucking garbage. <laughs> I hate it, man. No, I uh, I like being. It's uh, so that's it's weird. Quiet. I guess that would be like a double-headed sword. You'd be in a city, but you would be pretty much alone. But you're in alone. a quiet city. So I mean, I would move until people start moving in. Then I move right back. You'd be out. like I am legend. <laughs> During the day, you yeah. just walk around. There's nothing. So yeah, man. It's, I can drive all over, not have anxiety oh, yeah. in the car. Yeah. No, oh yeah, dude. Fuck, man. I, guys, I wanted to record an episode this week just for you guys to see how how bad I got it when I'm riding with her. But I mean, it was bad. The wind was making the semi driver sway a little bit. Uh, it was way and more than a little bit. She forced me to get off the fucking highway. It was way more than a little bit, and then he wanted to go past the motherfucker. Oh, that was him. after no. it. That was after the movie. It, it was man. not because of so it. So I was all cramped up because of the movie, <laughs> and I just wanted to get home. And what did she make me do? Hop off the fucking highway. It was that or drop me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So, nah. Uh. That's what do we got? What else we got, guys? We got. Uh, let's just do our today to learn. Today I we're learned. Getting pretty cool. We're at one hour and eighteen minutes. I apologize if you're still listening. <laughs> uh, well, I got two, so that's fine. And and because this week was nine eleven, and for you young kids, that was a, a horrific event that you're going to learn about in history class. Uh, the deaths from nine eleven related illnesses are going to outpace the number of people who were lost on the day alone. Soon, like just the people who died from illnesses that they received. Uh, from the the ground zero uh, trash and, and and smog and stuff, 
So pretty soon they're going to outnumber the people that died on the day, which is what around three thousand, wow. uh, pretty pretty close at least. Um, oh no shit. Yeah, so that's that's going to be a lot of people that died just from illnesses related to what happened. Yeah. Now, firefighters, police officers, people who lived close by, too. Uh, the other one I have is that heart transplant patients don't feel chest pains when they have a heart attack because the donor heart is an involuntary muscle, and the new heart doesn't form connections with the new host nervous system. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, the nurse, Pretty over, crazy, here, yeah, the nurse over here can tell me more about it. I don't know <laughs> shit about it, but I just thought that was interesting as hell. Yeah, their nerve endings just don't um, connect, and, you know, you just don't, don't feel it. Huh. Which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of like the, what have you ever seen the people who have their fingers sewed back on? Yeah. I guess the same thing with that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, nerve endings, I think they t- they grow back like point something, either a millimeter or a centimeter a year. So, oh, I mean. Wow. So, theoretically, if you yeah. live long enough. I don't know about the heart situation, but I know in like your fingers and stuff, in years, maybe you'll get some feeling, but I yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, you could feel it beating, I'm sure, inside your chest. Yeah. But I mean, I but don't know. To actual like um, have like sort sort some sort of like pain with it. I don't. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. What do you got, you Chris? Uh, it's Danny's turn. She is very. Oh, you got one? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna ask you. You don't answer because I already told you. So, uh, how do cashews grow? What? On a tree. Okay. Like yeah. how? Like on like. Like. What do you mean? Like on a little like a fruit? Get the fuck no out of here! No way, Bobby! What the fuck? The man is? of useless facts. I no. knew it! Yes. I knew it! So if any, unlike <laughs> Bobby, I did not know that cashews grow off of a cashew apple. Is what they call it. So uh, it's a tree. It's called an apple. Yep. Oh. And an apple, the cashew apple grows on this tree, and then the cashew. Is, like grows at the bottom of the apple, so it's fucking weird. Yeah. So like, wait till you guys find out about coffee. <laughs> You're gonna, your mind's gonna go. Bloom. Yeah. Come on. But I thought that was like my Listen, wow. I, I, mean, I could well, not believe that. That's pretty. But I mean, of yeah. course, Bobby would know that. No, so no, no doubt. No well, doubt. You guys know about the uh, the most expensive coffee in the world, right? Isn't it made out of poop or something? Uh, it's not made out of poop. They feed the coffee uh, fruits to, to monkeys, yeah, right? And and, yeah, it's out. monkey poop. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. It's coffee. Well, something like, yeah. <laughs> it's coffee, but, which I did have Death Wish coffee today for the first time. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's supposed to be uh, one of the world's strongest coffees. It was pretty good. I'm going to have to get some more of that. All but, right. Uh, all right, Chris. My today I learned, all right? Today I learned that in 1981, a man named Robert, or a man named Roger Fisher had an idea for a volunteer to have the ICBM launch codes put into their chest cavity. The idea was so that in the event of an emergency, the volunteer would carry a knife to be killed with. What it was, <laughs> listen, it was meant to force the personal killing of one man just to start the impersonal killing of millions. I thought that was pretty cool. And creepy. Yeah, that, is, that should be a movie. I mean, think about it. Like, uh, you have to kill this one man just so you can start killing people you don't fucking know. I mean, that would definitely make the pushing the button a lot harder of a decision. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Uh, I, I could think of someone I'd want to volunteer for that position, but we won't get into that. So, uh, have you guys ever seen Lone Survivor? Yeah. Kiefer, yeah. Uh, yeah. Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah. They should make a show or a movie about that on that premise there. Oh, yeah, no be, doubt. How would you like to be that guy? Oh, uh, no. Nice. I would not. I would not. Uh, hey, guys, we need to. We're going we're gonna to need to cut you open. The codes have changed. I mean, we're anytime, moving. We're, we've got different cir- security personnel now. we gotta, we got to change the codes. We any, just fight anytime everybody. the threat level in America goes up just a tick, you're just you're puckering. You're puckering. Oh, no sure. doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and uh, with that, as always, it's what the fuck. Dave. Oh, I guess it's not Dave. Weekly talk. Yeah. Weekly yeah. Talk. Weekly talk. Dave, Dave. Weekly <laughs> talk. Oh, my God, Dave. Bob figured it out. Weekly, Weekly talk, talk featuring Bob, Chris, and Danny. Here not, we are. Not yep. necessarily in that order. Well, no, no. Definitely featuring Danny, Chris, Bob. Yep. DCB. Peace out, y'all. Bye. Well, you're not going to say bye? Bye. bye. <laughs> All right. He said bye. Bye. Please remember to subscribe, follow, and email us at wtfdaveandchris at gmail.com.